Hello everyone this is part 19 of what if Naruto was a one of a kind genius, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. Jiraiya looked at Naruto with a stern look on his face, he didn't want to believe what the blonde had just said, it wasn't anything wrong, it was just that it came as a surprise to him given the situation that the village was in. Naruto wanted to leave Kanoa, not permanently, but for some time away to train. He had been doing just fine inside this village, so what was the problem now? He had disappeared once when things got tough, but things were not that tough now. Actually, they were good. The villagers appreciated Naruto's efforts as a shinobi and were actually coming in terms with the fact that he was actually Minato's son. Things have changed for you, Naruto. You no longer have to worry about someone attacking you or the villagers throwing things at your house. Your mother can smile walking around the streets and no one will throw straight glares at you, Jiraiya tried to reason with Naruto. For sure, even if the villagers were changing, Naruto was not. The blonde still looked at them with contempt, or just indifference. Perhaps the right term was the latter. He could not go as far as to say that Naruto hated the villagers of this village, he didn't like them, yes, and saw them as low-life creatures who didn't deserve to be humans, but he didn't despise them. It was almost as if the actions they took were expected of them. You expect evil to try to ruin your life. Naruto expected the villagers to act in the way that they had been because he believed it was their nature. Snakes would bite and spit out venom, dogs would bark and try to take a bite, it appeared to be the theme when Naruto dealt with the villagers. I have never said that things were the same, Jiraiya, Naruto responded in a calm but firm tone. Things have changed, he was willing to admit that. He had confessed it to his mother and everyone who knew him. He was feeling slightly alive and somewhat happy. There was no longer a load on his shoulders, the heavy yoke that he had been carrying was removed from his shoulders. He was free. Things had changed, Kanoa was changing, but he was not. Naruto would always be Naruto. Yes, he would eventually have to adapt to his surrounding to accommodate it, but his objectives hadn't changed that much. Things around the village were just changing, but this was still the hidden leaf. Nothing would last forever. A single thing that proves to be suspicious, everything would be forgotten and they would return the W of the past. Then why do want to leave Kanoa? I thought I explained that clearly for you to understand. You are not a simple man who fails to grasp complex terms, why do you look so baffled by a simple statement? Jiraiya shook his head. I just want to know why. I can't understand the reasoning and the timing of your thoughts. You don't have to understand it really, Naruto said with a wave of his hand. But it makes things easy for me if you do understand it. Still, it is making me feel slightly annoyed that you cannot seem to understand why I need my time away from the village to train. Simple things you must understand, Jiraiya. The Sanan didn't like the way Naruto was talking to him. Perhaps he just didn't want to think of the reason, he just wanted Naruto to explain. The blonde's tone had a hint of impatience in it. It was for the first time that he got the feeling from the blonde. Naruto was good at masking his emotions. Was he just that annoyed? I understand you want to get strong, be you. If you're going to ask me, why I wish to get strong, you can stop Jiraiya. I honestly do not have the patience to answer, rhetoric, questions, Naruto see off the Sanin in a hardened tone. Have you heard about the Akatsuki? Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. The fact that Naruto seemed a little snappy today was out of his mind. Naruto seemed to know something and unless he was getting old and forgetting easily forgetting things, he had not told the blonde about the organization and its intentions. But if the blonde knew about it, then there were no problems for him to seek out training. But who would protect him against s rank shinobi? Naruto was strong for someone his age but he wasn't almighty that there was nothing he could not handle. Finally, you seem to be thinking, Naruto said with a sigh. I heavily rely on the Kyuubi's power when in trouble. Perhaps for now it is because I have reached my limits and need something to break those boundaries to meet the challenges I am facing, but I still need to be strong enough to fight on my own. The same thing can be said about Sasuke. He is going to inherit the Uchiha clan from his mother, and he will need to be strong enough to handle everything. 
As the days go on, the Sharingan becomes a rare commodity that many would care for. He will need to protect his clan while his mother rests. I have my own problems that I must solve, but there is nothing wrong with trying to become strong enough to defeat your enemies. We are not trying to gain more power simply because we are power hungry. It is only the realization that there are mountains that will crush us in our current form. I do not wish to be powerless in my life. I don't wish to face a situation I will be unable to do anything about. If I can train my body to handle the challenges that this cursed world can throw at me, then I will not hesitate to do so. Maybe some will say I am power hungry, but I do not care. I am not care anyone to become strong, but merely utilizing what I have to get strong on my own. That is interesting coming from someone so young, Shikaku suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Neither Naruto or Jiraiya appeared surprised by the man's presence. You give off some good reasoning. What I expect from you. My son speaks highly of you, he has often admitted that you will be a frightening person when you grow up. Praise from Anara, I will take it, Naruto said with an expressionless look on his face. He said nothing further, and did not attempt to study the Nara. He was certain he would only get that bored expression that would not reveal anything. Well, it is the reality, Shikaku said. What do you want to protect, Naruto? What is important to me, Naruto said, he did not specify what. That can be done while in this village. I realize that this village means a lot to my mother, and I have grown quite attached to Mikoto, leaving her behind would be rather sad. As you can see, when I move, Sasuke moves. Sasuke is attached to this village because of his clan, that is something he will not abandon. And as someone who likes moving around with, tools, to use, it would not be in your advantage if you left him behind, given everything you have done for him, Shikaku said without looking at Naruto. I want you to admit something to me before I say I can I will support your decision to leave the village, for now. Shikaku was the Jonan commander and a very respectable man. Hyashi held much pull when it came to political power, but within the village's military, the Nara was the boss. He was the kind of person you tried to listen to when he was talking, because simply, he did not waste his breath talking nonsense. I planned it, it was either that or I leave Kanoa. Escaping the village carried some risks as I would be hunted down, that would have made things difficult. The only option was to get rid of Danzo. I also did you guys a favor, he should have been K long ago, but the Sandime allowed it to play for too long, Naruto responded calmly. Shikaku managed a small smile. He did not say what, but the blonde had responded because he knew what he wanted. Obviously you did not do it alone, you had some help. I can't say from someone who is currently a shinobi of this village, I have my thoughts, but I will not voice them. I will talk to the other head clans, and you can leave, but on one condition. Naruto stood up from where he was sitting, I will let you know, but only you. I'd like to keep my movements a secret to avoid unnecessary disturbances. Naruto walked away after saying those words. Jiraiya stared at the back of the blonde-haired Uzumaki for a while before turning to Shikaku, was it safe to allow him to leave alone? Yes, Shikaku said with a nod. We don't have to worry about his safety or anything. He will return to this village. I'm sure he was only, asking, to simplify things. His mind had already been made up on leaving, and even if we had said no, he would have still leave. It is best to allow him to leave on our terms. I wanted him to accompany me to fetch Sunid, Jiraiya said. But he isn't the greatest person for that kind of a job. True, you should depart soon. Kanoa cannot keep going on without a cage. Sunid has to come back to this village, Jiraiya. She cannot be allowed to roam freely. She has done a great service to the village in the past, but we need her now. The toad sage nodded with a firm head. I won't come back unless she is by my side. The Sanan promised. Shikaku nodded. Although it is a bothersome, I will handle most day-to-day -day duties of managing things along with Hyashi until you return. We will try to keep information contained within the village, but sooner or later, the villagers will start asking who will become the next cage. I hope by then, you will have returned. Huga compound. Hyashi stared at his elder, who had quite honestly surprised him during the Chunin exams. She had requested a meeting with him, he did not know what for, but Hanata had never shown this much boldness before. Perhaps he should be grateful to the Uzumaki, but he was not. A part of him believed that Hanata always had it in her. 
If she can pull the same courage and strength as she did during her fight against Neji, then she would prove to be a huge surprise, but good for the clan. The Huga clan needed strong leaders, and as his daughter, Hanata had to be strong. Tell me, Hanata, did you hold back in your fight against Neji? He was certain that if Hanata had wanted to win the match, she could have won it. It was apparent that her agenda wasn't to win the match but to prove a point and she had proved it all right. She had done it expectedly. He was not proud, but he was happy that she was showing changes. I can't say I held back, but I think if I was fighting to win, I would have won the match, Hanata responded calmly. Why did you not try to win the match? I just wanted to prove a point, and if I had defeated Neji before I can help him, things would have been difficult. Hyashi was silent for a few moments before nodding. Why did you call this meeting? I wish to be given the right to challenge my young sister so that I can reclaim what I lost to her, Hanata said. The position didn't mean that much to her, but she just wanted to be able to protect her sister. She could not have her younger sister shouldering all the responsibilities. Besides, she needed to change the clan. The ways of the clan are what has brought the resentment within the clan. She wanted to change that resentment into love. Family wasn't supposed to be in the way that the Huga was. They were cousins, not enemies. Neji treated her like an enemy, but they were family. It wasn't just Neji, it was with most members of the branch family. Of course none of them boldly displayed it in the same manner as Neji in fear of the cursed caged seal. I see, Hyashi paused. He had expected as such after hearing what she had said during her match with Neji. He had spoken to the prodigy to clear some things about his resentment and why his father D instead of him. He believed things would change now. Neji, Hyashi called. Come in. The Huga stiffly walked into the room and greeted Hanata. The girl returned the greeting with a warm smile. You won't face your sister, but your cousin. If you defeat Neji, you will reclaim what you lost but in return you will no longer be associated with Uzumaki Naruto. He did not want that kind of a crowd anywhere near his daughter. It wasn't anything personal against the Uzumaki, but the rumors that were making rounds within some powerful circles were making him think twice. There was a lot more going on with the blonde and he had to keep his daughter out of it. Despite everything, Hanata was still his daughter, and even though he had been tempted to shift her towards the branch family for her lack of a spine, she was still his daughter and with the brave new face she was showing now, he could not discard her. Naruto represented a threat to this. The blonde Uzumaki was a dangerous person, Hyashi would admit that to himself, but not to anyone. Besides, there was a possibility of the boy influencing the decisions that Hanata made. If she became clan head like that, Naruto would have influence over the clan. He could not have that. This was why he needed to see off the relationship now before it blossomed into something dangerous. Why father? Hanata asked in a quiet tone. Hyashi glared harshly at Hanata for questioning him. Are you questioning my decisions, Hanata? Have you forgotten who I am? I meant not to disrespect you father, but you have to understand, I am what I am because Naruto took his time to train and teach me things. He even allowed me close to his mother. I assure you, Many people do not get that privilege, Hanata explained in a light tone. It would be somehow if I just ended the relationship after everything. Naruto would feel betrayed. It doesn't matter what he feels. You have to think about the clan now, Hyashi stated firmly. Nevertheless, I will thank Naruto personally for his role. I cannot ignore it, but this has to be done or you will remain as you are, Hanabi will remain clan heiress. I understand, father, Hanata said humbly. Training Ground 7. Naruto looked at Ino with an impassive look on his face, he had said he would train the girl, but that was impossible now because he was leaving the village. She would no doubt throw a tantrum over the idea of abandoning his duties towards her, but there was nothing that could be done, he had to leave and Ino had to stay behind. He was within Training Ground 7 the ground in which so many things happened in his time with Team 7. He was still a member of the team, but he was sure that by the time he returned to this village, he would no longer be a member. He would be focusing on much more greater things in life than playing teammates. I don't quite remember the last time it was just me and you sitting under a tree, Naruto said looking up into the tree. Things have changed drastically between him and Ino. Maybe so because his mother had now shifted from the Yamanaka towards the Uchiha. Since the incident, she has spent much more of her time with Mikoto than with Ino's mother. 
She still did go there to help when she could, but Naruto could not remember the last time he went to the place. He had no desire to even be there. Then again, he only went into the shop because his mother was there. Perhaps the fragrance was flowers was lovely, and peaceful, but if it wasn't the fact that his mother visited the place, he would never have set foot at the Yamanaka flower shop. You have been ignoring me lately, I apparently don't matter anymore, Ino responded in a quiet tone, looking down the ground instead of Naruto. I wouldn't say that, Naruto said. He would not say she was useless to him because of her weak-minded attitude. Maybe she was not useful, but to say that she no longer mattered would not be the truth. We did have some memories that annoyed me. I cannot forget those. If anything, you were the friend that I had when no one else wanted to be friend. I at least can appreciate that. From where I am standing, it doesn't look that way, Ino responded. You have been ignoring me. Maybe, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. I've been a lot more focused on my duties. I am a shinobi and you are not. Maybe you wear a headband, but you're still living in the dream world. Our worlds are far apart. There would be nothing to talk about. Our worlds have always been far apart, Naruto, Ino stressed. Even so, I could always count on you. I could always come to you, but you have changed. When you're not doing missions, it is Hanata or Sasuke and the rest of the time it is your mother. Naruto was silent for a long minute. I won't be able to train you, Ino. One thing I have always liked about you is your perceptiveness, and keen mind. I will miss that, but I cannot train you because I will be gone from the village by tomorrow. Ino's head snapped towards Naruto as she stared at him. What? Only for a couple of years in order to train, Naruto said. Ino stood up, I see, she said walking away. She did not say anything further, just walked away. Naruto did not stop her. The blonde merely settled on his back entered into a staring contest with the leaves. It was so peaceful now in the hidden leaf that he could even doze off without worrying. There would be no villager who would bravely attempt anything. Danzo was gone and the Sandime Hockage was also gone. He was free to relax. He could still not get used to the feeling. A part of him have just wanted to enjoy it while a part of him felt bored with just sitting around with nothing to do too. Before this, peace, there always something that he needed to think about, something he had to do. Naruto closed his eyes and his mind as well. I thought you were going to leave before I could talk to you, Hanata suddenly spoke, causing S. Naruto's eyes to open slowly. My father informed me that you would be leaving the village for a couple of years. Do you have something you need to tell me? I spoke to my father and he gave me the chance to reclaim my right to be clan heiress, I had to fight Neji though, but it was something that had to be done, Hanata spoke calmly. I see, that was all that Naruto could offer in response. For now, he had no use for Hanata. He had given her enough to stand on her own feet. The fact that she was able to stand before her father without shrinking meant that he had done a great job. It was a beautiful job that he had done and now it was all over, she could stand to walk on her own without him glaring at her by the sidelines. Of course she would be needed so or later after he does return to the village. The Hugo was an important clan within the village after all. He would find a good use for it. For now, Hanata could do as she pleased, he would not care but when the time does come, he would care. The condition that my father set for me to reclaim what I lost was that I see all my ties with you, Hanata said in a much quieter tone. Whether Naruto was surprised or not, it did not show, the blonde Uzumaki didn't even give it much thought. We are all selfish in some parts. No matter what, humans will always take a decision that sweet them best regardless of what. For your case, it is understandable. Protecting your sister and saving your clan has always been your goal. Maybe I would have been disappointed if you didn't make the choice you did. Hanata smiled, relieved. She had thought Naruto would understand, but she was not completely sure. Hearing him say it with his own words made her feel relieved to say that she didn't make the wrong choice and she had not been wrong about Naruto. Her father was the one who was wrong, but for now, she would just have to keep those thoughts to herself. She could do nothing now. She was after all just a mere brat. She would have to grow into the clan and a lot stronger for her word to actually mean something. Hanata would grow. If she did not, nothing would change. She didn't hope of see her ties with Naruto. She would go with what her father was saying for now, but as time goes on, he would have to forgive her. Maybe she would work on changing his mind about Naruto.
Nevertheless, for now, there were no problems because Naruto was leaving the village. She would not have contact with him and she would not be worried. Naruto wasn't the one who needed her to worry for his safety. About an hour later, Naruto was sitting atop of a tree within the forest of deaths. It was a bit inconvenient to relax within the within the village when he had eyes watching over him. There was no one that could order Anbu to spy on his movements, perhaps the village's councils or the commander of the forces, but he should not hold that much importance that those people feel the need to watch him. Perhaps there was a certain bird saying that he was a flight risk. Naruto did not imagine abandoning Kanoa at this stage. Everything was well set for his life to be memorable and without many troubles. His mother was happy here. She had Ino's mother and Mikoto. She had this village that she seemed to care for despite everything it has done to them. Naruto could not simply wish to take that away from his mother. He understood that it was possible to form new relationships with those around, but his mother was content with being in the hidden leaf. He would die before robbing his mother of her own happiness. Naruto could adapt anywhere he went, he didn't think much of humans anyway. They were more like the same to him. Most of them were just monkeys in a zoo and some of them were just weed that needed to be rooted out. He would not deny that there were good people in this world. An experience with Hanata had taught him that much. Naruto's train of thoughts came to a halt when a white masked man flashed beside him. He didn't look at the man though, he merely stopped thinking and opened his ears to hear what the man was saying. Orokimaru was seriously W during his fight with the Sandime Hockage, at this stage, it is safe to say that he is incapacitated. The Sandime took away his ability to use ninjutsu by sealing away his hands. So, he is weakened, Naruto said in thought. This was a good chance to take care of the snake Sanon. The world would be much better if a despicable person such as the snake wasn't alive. Naruto snorted at the reason, like he cared. His main reason for wishing for the snake to be dwelled be that Orokimaru caused the invasion of Kanoa. He was the one who manipulated the council of Sunagakur and the one who K. Rasa. He could give the man some credit for not allowing himself to be manipulated. If he was K, it meant that he had not given Orokimaru any chance at all. While he might not have grown attached to the man, he could give him the credit of dying while refusing to betray the trust his mother had placed on him. To the Uzumaki, that meant that the man was trustworthy and Orokimaru was not. To say the snake was two-faced would be an understatement, he was multi-faced. But still a Sanon regardless. A dog is much more vulnerable when it is backed against a corner. I'd say Orokimaru will be much more cautious now and d. But when he regains his strength, he will turn back to his normal arrogant self, Naruto said. I can wait, but I will have to confirm everything myself. Anything else? Koharu and Homura are plotting something. They are rather displeased with the turn of events. The man was saying that they were unhappy with the fact that he had a hand in Keidanzo and that none of the council members seemed to care about the death of the man. The idea that he may have had a hand in it might have come and the others might have shot it down. Those two would probably attempt to prove that he was indeed involved, if not, they would surely try to campaign against him by seeking out the villages and drive their propaganda. For a second, Naruto thought it would be too much of a hassle to deal with it and those two would need to be erased, but he shook his head. He didn't have to K everyone. If he tries to have them K, it would only cause more problems as if he could be leaving AT which would eventually connect to him. The village could handle the mess. Shikaku and Jiraiya would certainly do something to repel the elders from playing their trade. Is Shikaku aware of it? It is a possibility, Hyashi may know. Shikaku isn't sitting inside the Hokage office, but the Hyuga head is. Naruto didn't find that to be surprising. If Shikaku was like his son then it was a possibility then, he would rather play the supporting role than take the lead. It was even troubling in this situation because being Hokage required much more work to be done and with what has happened, management of everything would require a lot of effort. Anara would certainly do everything to avoid something that would require too much energy. I hope Shikaku does something before they get bold enough to do something unwanted. In any case, keep watch, and we will, negotiate, to keep them silent if it comes to it. Hi, there was a pause as the man seemed hesitant to ask what he wanted to ask. When working with Danzo, you didn't have to voice your thoughts, you merely did what you were instructed without questions and without fail. The man did not tolerate failure, but Naruto wasn't that much of a dictator and a control freak. 
Speak your thoughts, the blonde Uzumaki said calmly. Why? Negotiate. It would be quite easy for us to silence them without leaving any evidence behind. I don't doubt that, Naruto started. But you people still have a goal to protect Kanoa. Their efforts to ruin me would destabilize the calmness that was brought up by the man who claimed to have done the deed. And besides, there is a certain boundary that I cannot afford to cross. My actions were tolerated, but anything more will not be. The best thing I can hope for if I do something they don't like would probably be a time to run away before they can give chase. Not every action would be tolerated. Naruto did not want to test how far they were willing to tolerate some of his actions. It was better to not to find out the hard way. So far, it was good and he would not be making stupid moves. His mother would not suffer because he could not keep things under control and was acting like ABM. The man seemed to think about it before nodding. I understand, he said. Should we continue on the surveillance of Orokimaru? Naruto nodded, but have cider it. He will be suitable for this kind of mission. I want confirmation on whether the redhead with the snake is really an Uzumaki or not. If so, then she must be removed from the lair. As you wish, Sunagakur. Baki thought it was best decision to allow Gara or Temari to become the cage of the village he loved dearly. Kankuro was out of the picture since he wasn't suited for the job. Temari had her own issues, which would make her a difficult cage. There was nothing wrong with allowing a woman to become a cage. When looking at it, Baki thought Gara was most suited. He was much calmer than his siblings were and thought a lot more before he took his decisions. Temari was prone to burst-ups with her hot temper and Kankuro, well, he was just Kankuro. Gara would do just fine and since he was the son of the previous cage, it would be no problem. Maybe some people would be against the idea given his past, but Baki would not allow something like that to stand in the way of Suna's survival. They could not allow just anyone to become Kazekage. Someone trusted who would not come with any other intentions was needed in that tower. You seem conflicted, Gara said to his sensei. The man had always kept his emotions, hidden, but today he could see some. Perhaps it was because he had become a good reader of people's emotions with the years of pain and suffering. There has been a lot of think about, Baki responded calmly. Naruto was here yesterday and he s all members of the village's council for their role in the invasion. He knew that they had supported the idea and got rid of them for it. Gara showed no outward reaction to it, he wasn't surprised. Naruto would not forgive anyone who placed his mother in harm or threatened her peace. Surely, the invasion had its damages, and the blonde had been disturbed by it. Perhaps the major fact that made things worse was the thought of betrayal. Naruto expected more from Suna, not to be stabbed in the back by the village. If the council had known about the invasion and had actually supported it, then he would no doubt put them in the path of his sword. If he had known about it and had willingly kept it from him, Naruto would not have stopped in his assault. Maybe he would have ended up K-them. Gara didn't put it past the blonde to do something so brutal. You're not surprised, Baki said. There is no reason to be, the Jinchuriki said. He did chase after us with the intention to K-us. Only stopped when we explained that we didn't know. If we had known, maybe I wouldn't be alive at this point. Of course there was still was resentment or maybe just lack of love for his brother. Gara was sure that no matter what, Kankuro would not be liked by Naruto. It was a wonder why the blonde Uzumaki hadn't thought of attacking him. Well, he was not complaining. He still had his brother. He had already lost a mother and a father. He did not wish to lose any more precious members of his family. He chased after you and still listened to you, Baki said in surprise. I imagine if he came after you with intentions to K you, he would have been infuriated. Yet, he was able to let that anger pass. Naruto isn't the one to give in to his emotions. He reasons before he acts. Perhaps he tries to avoid making mistakes by rushing in recklessly without understanding things. He allows logic to rule over him and I don't think he wanted to do anything that would upset his mother, Gara explained lightly. If Naruto had K them knowing that they hadn't known anything about the invasion, his mother would have surely been displeased by it. The redhead Uzumaki had come to love them and she cared for them. If something bad happened, she would obviously be worried. Naruto would not intentionally do something that would worry his mother. She did come out on top of everything. At least that was what Gara had learned and he was sure that everyone who knew the blonde Uzumaki knew it as well. 
Well, at least these days he didn't show it as much as he used to. The blonde could afford to stay away from his mother, but she was always in mind and she could never be forgiven. Perhaps the change came with growing up and learning new emotions that refused to be expressed. That is at least something good, Baki acknowledged. If he allowed his emotions to rule him, he would certainly not be the kind of person he was. I guess for him staying rational and logical at all times is must. One wrong move and he could find himself in trouble. Gara thought for a few moments before nodding. He would make enemies, but as he is, he isn't the one to be making enemies. He mostly ignores the things that around him unless they affect him. Well, in this world it doesn't matter if you do things that will attract enemies or not, for no good reason, people will be after your head. Simply because we live in the shinobi world. Anything can happen in this world and you should be careful with how you deal with things, Baki said firmly. Your father knew Suna's position in the Great Five Villages, yet that didn't make him plot sinister moves to try to get Suna on top. He planned properly for something that would last. In any case, I want to inform you that after S the council members, Naruto said he wanted you to become the next Kazekage. I don't know how we are going to go about that. I guess even if he hadn't said anything, I would have still cast my vote for you to become the next Kazekage. Gara was silent for a few moments as he thought for a few things. Leading this village meant taking responsibility for everything that happened leading to Suna's invasion in Kanoa. But this also gave him the chance to protect the village he loved and ensure that something that happened before would not happen again. Mistakes of the past could not be repeated in the future or it would mean the end of this beloved shinobi. If he became a cage, how would things be? Would the villagers even accept him? They no longer hated him as they used to since Kushina fixed his seal, and things have been better, but becoming a cage would be a different matter. He wouldn't even be surprised if some even whispered that he had become, nice, just for them to lower the guard so that he could take over the village. The human mind had no limits to what it could think. When? Baki blinked in surprise before shaking his head. I didn't think you'd be so eager for it. When you become a cage, you don't live for anything but your village. Your father was willing to sacrifice even his own family for the village. Even the great Minato Namika sacrificed his life and his son for the future of Kanoa. Do you think you can carry out that much weight, Gara? I have never been afraid of a challenge, but this is much more than just a challenge. This is a chance to live, to do something good. Some of my past actions were not just, this village has also fallen, it would be an honor to pull up my sleeves to attempt to bring out to the light. Besides, if he didn't step up, his sister would be used for political gains. He could not have that. He loved her dearly that he would not stand to watch it happen, even it would mean that he would make some people angry. Then before I leave you to think about things, you must also know that Temari will have to be used, I don't like using the word, but there is no better word to it. Danzo was still willing for her to be married to Naruto, we may have to propose that with the next cage. At least with him, it is someone you know, someone who would not hurt your sister. Gara didn't say anything in response as Baki left, but he did understand what the man was saying. Well, he was never against the proposed marriage in the first place. The question now was whether Naruto would still treat them the same after everything. He had come here to this village to ask the council members and left without saying a word to them. The invasion had changed things, it was reasonable to think that the blonde would not treat them in same way he used to. Would he be cold? Would he even be good to Temari as he had been? The blonde might even refuse the deal this time. Perhaps maybe he would agree if his mother pushed him towards it. Gara didn't know what would happen. He would have to speak to the blonde to understand where things stood with them. You appear to be in deep thought, something bothering you. Temari asked her brother as she walked up to him. Naruto was here yesterday, apparently to ask the council members for their role in the invasion, Gara responded calmly, his eyes fixed on his elder sibling. Like him, Temari did not show any surprise. Did he do it? I haven't heard anything about it. Gara nodded. He did it. They are probably keeping it a secret just so the villagers don't panic. We don't have a cage and are in trouble with Kanoa over our role in the invasion and now we lose the council, the village is basically a mess at the moment. Some people would rather abandon the ship rather than sink with it or even try to save it. If people start to leave this village, it will not survive. Night. Yugao was slowly walking along the bright night streets of the hidden leaf with Naruto by her side. 
They were coming from the Senju compound and perhaps out of sentimentality, Naruto had decided it would be best for them to take a walk. She could sense Anbu watching them and some hopping through the rooftops, going about their business. Naruto seemed ignorant of the world around him, but Yugao knew better. She had worked with him in Anbu after all. Say, Naruto, Yugao started calmly. What is your relationship with Mikoto-san? Naruto turned his head to face the woman over the strange question she had just asked him. Her expression said she was being D-serious. If it wasn't for the looks she had been giving him and Mikoto, Naruto would not have responded to the question. That explains your looks, why do you ask, Yugao? Yugao thought about dropping the matter given Naruto's tone, but this was something she could not just drop like that. It wasn't like Naruto was suddenly going to say he was leaving her behind because she was asking too many questions. Well, it is just that the way she treats is a little creepy at times. She makes you as a man, but you're just a kid, Yugao paused for a moment as a thought of a few things. Considering what she has seen from him, she could not really say that with confidence, even though he was really just a kid. Well, in body at least. Most of the times, I can pretty come to a conclusion on what people are trying to say to me by thinking, but the subject doesn't interest me, I don't bother trying to understand it or even think much about it, Naruto said. If you want to keep this going, be more clear because I will not say the words you're afraid to say. But to answer your question, Mikoto is to me, he paused. I don't know, but an important person both me and my mother. She calls me her hero, and I guess her existence made me feel some emotions I never thought I could experience in this godforsaken village. How important is she to you? Irrelevant, Naruto said with a wave of her hand. If she is important, she is important. I don't measure how. There are barely a handful of things I, term, as important. Some things are just useful and some I like, those are disposables. Yugao shook her head. He had no shame in saying that. Well, this was Uzumaki Naruto. She had to get used to it. Still, it appeared that Naruto was oblivious of Mikoto's feelings to him. You do understand the love between a man and a woman, right? Naruto did not offer a response. What if I told you that Mikoto likes you in a way a woman likes a man? It's immoral for a woman old enough to be your mother having such feelings for a kid, but it is the truth. I don't even know what to think about it. If you were not Naruto, I would be repulsed by the idea, Yugao said, her eyes watching Naruto's body language like a hawk. The blonde offered nothing in return, ridiculous, the blonde said. Why don't we go now and ask her? I'm sure she has yet to sleep by now. If we stop by the Uchiha compound, we can ask her and no doubt she will give an answer if you ask, Yugao spoke in a daring tone. I see no need to prove anything, Naruto said before pausing. I must be bored indulging such conversation, the blonde Uzumaki said in thought. Yugao sighed knowing that just meant the end of the conversation. Naruto was not going to say anything about the matter, but she was determined that she would bring it up once more again. She was not going to end it here. Naruto would return to the village all grown up and no doubt he wouldn't be just a kid. She wondered how he would react if Mikoto made a move though. Obviously, Naruto didn't out much emphasis on the things of the heart, well things that had to do with romance. He didn't seem interested in it, but at once did say that it would make his mother happy if he developed such feelings. He said it, but it didn't actually mean that he was making attempts to develop those feelings or even try to learn about love. If he was not scheming, he was bored. Naruto would rather sleep than engage in mundane talk with anyone who was not his mother. Well, there were exceptions. Naruto's house. Everything was well set for them to leave, nothing was missing. Atachi was already waiting in the planned location and Naruto was just going to grab a hold of everyone and then they would disappear in a flash. The flying thunder god had been learned for the protection of his mother, but now he was using it to make life much simpler. Well, he could say the use of it now would be for the sake of his mother. The world was dangerous now, especially now that other villages had come to know that Kanoa had been invaded, and although it won, it was W. For safety reasons, Naruto thought it best that he didn't travel through the elemental nations as it would increase the risk of coming across hostile humans. It was just going to be two women and two, kids. S-Bags would be thinking of getting rid of the kids and then use the mothers. Naruto hated the thought, no, he despised the thought and such men who had those kinds of evil intentions. 
If there was something that he would openly admit to hate, then it was those low-life humans. Kushina stared at Naruto for a long moment before taking her eyes around the house. She was certainly going to miss the atmosphere of the house she once shared with her beloved Minato. But she would still be happy with Naruto. The last time they had gone out training, it had been fun. She met new people and assisted Naruto with his training. She had always been by his side when he trained. To give a few pointers there and there and to ensure that he doesn't overdo it. It had been a refreshing time and she certainly hoped that this one would be as refreshing as the last trip. Did we say goodbye to everyone? Kushina asked, looking around as if she had lost something. I'm good on my part, Yugao said. For her, it was just her former teammates in Anbu and maybe one or two friends, nothing more. She didn't have a lot of people she was familiar with. It was the life of an Anbu. She was always busy with missions and the one relationship she had maintained with Hayat had been good and fruitful, but he had been K. A part of her had felt as if she could no longer continue to live, but here she was. Although she was not part of this family, she felt part of it. Naruto trusted her with his mother after all. How many could claim to have the honor? Sasuke merely shrugged. The only person he could say goodbye to was his mother and that had been already taken care of. There is nothing left, it's not like we are leaving permanently anyway. We will come back to this village, Naruto responded calmly. I'm W that you don't think so highly of me, Naruto, Kakashi suddenly said as he appeared in the room. Naruto looked at the Jonin for a long moment. How could he have forgotten about the man who was as close to a family as anyone was? Kakashi had always been there for him, in training and just to stay close to him. The man might be tardy, but he had made time for him. Things changed after Team 7. Yes, he had become much more focused on becoming a sensei and making Hanata stronger as well as trying to exercise his frustrations over his lack of success in getting one over the Sandime Hockage. How could he have forgotten about the man though? It was careless of me, Naruto said to the Jonin. But I thought you were out of the village on the assignment Danzo had given you. He is D, Kakashi said. Can we talk? Naruto looked at his mother for a moment before nodding. Follow me outside, he said. Kakashi nodded and faced everyone else. Well, Yugao, Sasuke, I will see you soon. Have a safe journey, Kushina-san, the man said with an eye smile. You're going visit, Yugao asked. Kakashi merely gave an eye smile before following Naruto. He is going to follow us, Yugao asked. As far as she was concerned, Naruto had not told anyone of his location, and not anyone in the council knew where they were going. She didn't even know herself. He will probably make visits every now and then, Kushina said calmly. Well, Kakashi and Naruto have always been close, even if Naruto won't admit it or he just fails to realize it. He just refuses to admit it, Sasuke was quick to say. At least that was a part of Naruto that Sasuke could say he knew. He didn't know everything but he knew everything that needed to be known. He could blame his mother for making him understand the blonde. It wasn't that of a problem anyway as it made things easier for him because he was interacting with the Uzumaki on a daily basis. Unknown location. Yugao was quick to get on her stance when the black eyes of Itachi welcomed them after disappearing from Kanoa. She was thinking perhaps it was an ambush, but the fact that Naruto or anyone else seemed alarmed raised some questions but she still did not let her guard down. Itachi looked at Naruto questionably. The blonde Uzumaki shrugged, she doesn't know anything, he said. A time to tell her had never came up or maybe he had never thought of informing her. She wasn't going to run now or anything. It wasn't like this was some kind of a conspiracy. A discovery like this was okay, she would see things herself instead of asking him many questions he would not answer. Atachi shook his head. I guess you thought it wasn't that important, the Uchiha said, turning to face Yugao. Hello, Yugao-san. Atachi, Yugao more or less growled out the name. Do you understand this situation Naruto? The blonde merely shrugged. Don't ask too many questions and keep some thoughts to yourself. You won't get in trouble with Kanoa, either way. That isn't very nice thing to say, Kushina said to Naruto in a stern tone. Don't worry, Yugao. Atachi means no harm. He is going to be training Sasuke for the next two or three years. Don't think of a traitor of Kanoa, just think about Naruto's friend, Sasuke's brother, and Mikoto's elder son. The redhead Uzumaki said in a warm tone. 
Yu Gao just stared. It was a little too much. Sasuke, you can go up and sulk up to your brother. I will talk to him tomorrow. This has been a rather tiring day and I would like to rest because tomorrow, I will begin my training, Naruto said calmly. Sasuke glared. You're going to leave Sasuke to me. I thought you'd be interested in continuing with his training. Naruto shook his head. I have taught Sasuke what I know, besides, I need to focus on myself. I would rather not get involved, I'm sure you two have your own issues to deal with. Sasuke would resent me for interfering with his time with his brother. Before anything happens, Kushina was quick to say before Itachi could respond. Show me the kitchen. I want to pack everything we brought and ensure that everything is well set. If you're going to start training tomorrow, you will need to have all the healthy meals you can get. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.